Yes, he is, just to be very clear. And I know a lot of my audience isn't necessarily into bodybuilding or bodybuilders, but I think this is actually an important and possibly educational topic to be discussing in a way that's going to actually enhance your knowledge of the situation. So if you didn't know, yes, Chris Bumstead is moving to open in just a single show as far as now, which he makes a decisive statement saying it's a romantic ending to his career in open bodybuilding. Quoting him specifically in his video on the topic, he says, this is my last opportunity to ever do it. I have no expectations and I'm just competing for the love of bodybuilding, which I think is highly admirable. His approach is going to be very simple as well. He plans to enter the show without really any strict limits or aiming to get super lean. He wants to just show up full saying, quote, if I can get on stage at 250, which is crazy and be full as hell, it would be fun. And I think that's awesome. And that's a really cool way to look at it because he's not going to have to do any sort of extreme protocols to get down into his weight cap, which for those of you who don't know, Classic Physique does have a weight cap, the category at which Chris Bumstead competes in. There is three male categories. You have men's physique, classic physique, and open bodybuilding. Open bodybuilding, there's zero weight caps. You can be as big as you want to be. Classic physique, you do have weight caps as well as men's physique, and you can't exceed that weight cap or else you're disqualified. He'll have no bound to how big he can get or how full he can show up. He won't maybe have to do as much water manipulation pre-show, and that leaves him a higher threshold to compete for his weight as well as probably a healthier approach, to be completely honest. And he did mention that this is just really a chance for him to enjoy the stage without having all the pressures of being Mr. Olympia, without having to show up and think about winning every single time he steps on stage, which would be crazy pressure. Like, he has to win, essentially, each year. And now it's just showing up. He mentions that it's been six years of win to be the best in the world, right? And, and now it's, he says, specifically, this is my chance just to step back and enjoy it. What's interesting is he does leave us with a quote, which is questionable. Now, I'm not one to speculate on people's future decisions because this is like Kai Green when he said he was going to show up to the Olympia one year just out of the blue and everyone just kept perpetuating this idea that he might actually compete for some reason. It's been such a long string of running rumors that Chris Bumstead was going to compete in open bodybuilding, but he did leave us with this quote at the end of the video, which is... <sighs> erring on the side of maybe he might compete in open bodybuilding more depending on if he wins which he hints at maybe if i win this is his words i'll do the open o next year that's exactly what he said i don't know if he's just joshing around or if that tonality is real for him but what can be said is that him going into open bodybuilding a lot of people would say is stupid and they have they've mentioned in his own video that it was just terrible for his health and certainly on other people's videos they've said that it's terrible for his health because at the end of the day when you look at people like Chris Bumstead he is really jacked I mean he's a big human being he's about 240 pounds on stage at about six foot one inches or maybe six foot two I'm not so sure but when you compare him to a same height equivalent of Andrew Jack who's also an open bodybuilder but 300 pounds on stage it's very quick to you can easily dictate basically how he's going to do in an open bodybuilding stage. A lot of people say he would kill it. Reality is, is there's people at his height that weigh 40 or more pounds than him. So it's pretty unlikely that he would actually place well. And if he was to just do this show for the hell of it, great for him. I think it's awesome. He doesn't have to peak. So there's really not a big health risk. And the part of which I'm hopefully going to bring to you in this video is that when a bodybuilder competes, it's not necessarily the anabolics that are the most deleterious effects of, of their health. It's actually the things they do one to two weeks prior to the show day. Bodybuilders do a lot of different things. They restrict potassium, they restrict or increase sodium. They often take diuretics, loop or non-loop diuretics, which is a very comprehensive explanation that I don't want to necessarily provide right now, but basically one spares potassium, one doesn't. Sometimes they'll take multiple different diuretics that do multiple different things. And this can get really risky as you can cause yourself to enter states of hyperkalemia or hypokalemia, have literally just static heart failure. It's happened a lot in bodybuilding, actually. Not to mention your kidneys thrive off of hydration. And when you intentionally dehydrate yourself via not consuming water, you also run into significant issues with your health health and blood pressure. And so it is peaking for shows that can actually be one of the most harmful things a bodybuilder does in his entire year or competitive season, as well as arguably his off season when he's pushing copious amounts of food that isn't necessarily normal by human standards. And so a lot of people question what he's doing and say, oh my God, it's so unhealthy. Like why would Chris Bumstead do this? But the reality is, is he's probably actually going to be doing nothing to get on that stage, except just maintaining his leanness without having to do any crazy peaking protocols to just show up, which for him would 
would ultimately be fun. As he said, it would be a load off of his shoulders because he's not having to do all these intricate protocols or peak week stuffs to get on stage and be the best. He's just going to show up and be a bit fuller and not have to worry about all those manipulations to his water and sodium and all this other shit. So yes, it could be definitely deleterious to his health to open up the can of worms, which is open bodybuilding. But to be real with you, I don't think Chris Bumstead is going to take this any further than just having fun at a single show, as people are really extrapolating here that this might be actually a thing. Of course, it's not healthy to maintain a very large amount of muscle, especially using synthetic steroids. This is not the best thing for you in the world, but a couple more weeks isn't going to kill a guy either. Now, if he was to, say, extend this career and actually compete in open bodybuilding, that is where where I would have a little bit of questionability of, of what he's doing because of his past health issues and the effects that more drugs can do to a human being. Not to mention with open bodybuilding, the increased food intake, the increased training intensity and volume, and the year-round supplementation with peptides and pharmacology that definitely don't lead a person to a longer life. This also means that in an off-season context, with the more food and the more drugs, you're very likely to have hypertension, high heart rate, a lot of pulmonary hypertension, hypertension and a lot of things that would necessarily lead someone down a bad path and especially as a newfound father I don't think Chris Bumstead's willing to subject himself to that kind of issue his body if he was to progress into open bodybuilding would certainly undergo much more stress than it's even been used to when he's comparably just competing in the Mr. Olympia classic physique and he does you know have this problem of IgA immunoglobulin nephropathy which is a scary thing it's an autoimmune disorder which can spike up and, and truly cause kidney failure especially when given the high demands of bodybuilding, specifically the dietary intake of bodybuilding and the drugs that we use, which do increase pressure in the vascular system, which also lead to less than adequate kidney function. Additionally, he has torn muscles in the past and injured himself training, which I don't think would be best to exaggerate right now, as again, he would have to push so much harder. And in my personal book, him prioritizing money in business over just competing in open bodybuilding, considering his nephropathy and the other injuries that could possibly present themselves as he creates a longer career for himself isn't really worth it. He has a very successful business. He has his own supplement line and he makes millions of dollars just doing that. Even on YouTube, his ad revenue is likely upwards of $15,000 to maybe $20,000 per month. And that's just YouTube. So again, as a father now and a husband, he's probably looking at the best outlook for not just himself, but the entire longevity of his career and income. If I was him, I would definitely take this moment to be like, yeah, let's have a romantic end, as he put it, to bodybuilding. As he started his career doing bodybuilding, then entered classic physique, he could end his career doing bodybuilding and then actually retire. And I think that's a great thing. And it does sound fun just to show up to a show and be like, hey, everybody already knows me. I'm just going to walk on stage and see what happens. Like, that's really fucking cool. But if he's obviously looking for the long term function, functionality of his life, business, and relationships, I think he's very keen and aware as I would be to just say goodbye to bodybuilding and focus much more on just life in general as well as his business and income. And he does say in the video that he had to lose a bit of muscle to get down to that 242 weight cap, which is classic physique weight cap. And he thinks that he could actually show up on stage 250 with the same conditioning. And I believe that and he didn't have to, he's not gonna have to sacrifice a ton of conditioning, I'll be honest, or dryness or any of that. I just am curious about, you know, what the drug protocol would be if there's any changes to it, because again, his health is not necessarily in a stable place. It's a little bit precarious, as he's talked about before in past videos. What do you think? Is this a smart decision? Is this a bad decision? Should he be giving the fans what they want, or should he be prioritizing himself? Curious to generally get your opinions on the matter. Comment down below. I love reading the comments. As well, subscribe to this channel. It does me a huge, huge favor. And if you really want to be a number one fan supporter, Uno... <laughs> I don't know enough Spanish to finish that. So if you want to be a supporter, just click a link down below. We have a Discord group. It does have a free section where you could actually talk to me directly as well as other coaches within the community. And we do have a really big group. I think it's like 700 members plus at this point. But you could also join a paid section, which offers a lot more to you, like sourcing for certain pharmaceuticals and other things like that. It's totally up to you, but it does support this channel massively when you guys do enter that Discord. And it opens access up to speaking to coaches more one-on-one -on -one and directly about your fitness and bodybuilding journeys.